Good morning and welcome to another edition of Love and Daily, uh, brought to you by Browns and You. Um, I'm Chris Pereggi and I'm joined today by Sam Vassallo. Hi Sam, how's it going? Hello, all good here, how's it going? Good, good, thanks. Um, let's start with the, the headlines today, another jam-packed program. Um, so yesterday, uh, the, the biggest story was that TikTok video of the police woman uh, who went viral accidentally um, and her family has spoken out and warned that uh, she's extremely, she's taking this very badly, the whole family is taking this very badly, especially her elderly parents, we'll talk a bit about that uh, later. Um, police were also informed about the football league decision um, of Floriana being announced champions uh, before uh, that whole uh, celebration took place in Floriana. Uh, Malta has been named as a country to avoid uh, in Latvia's new flight list, and there's been some news as well about when Malta uh, might be opening the airport. Um, the University of Malta says international students are not entitled to refunds, even though they they didn't, even though they went home uh, to back to their countries and did not. Um, use use up the accommodation. We'll talk a bit about what's going on over there. Um, we also have a story about uh, whether mandatory flu shots are going to be um, enforced uh, ahead of the winter season to help spread to help limit the spread of, of COVID and influenza. So let's start with the first story, a very uh, uh, hot topic at the moment, Sam. Uh, that that police woman uh, and her viral TikTok video. Indeed, it's a story that everyone's talking about right now. So the family of a policewoman in the viral TikTok meme has, has spoken out to uh, Love in Malta. So just some background information in case anyone has been you know, living under a rock. There was a policewoman who made this uh, TikTok video in her break at a kebab shop next to, next to where she worked in Mostar, sent it to a WhatsApp group and this video was leaked, made its rounds on social media, and blew up after the um, football celebrations in Floriana, where it was placed side to side and kind of um, went to symbolize uh, police inaction. Now, the, her family, so, so the policewoman has been named, and her name is Francesca Zara. Um, she is not taking it very well at all, and her family isn't either. They basically said that she, you know, has been inside for the past days. She's experiencing suicidal thoughts and and taking antidepressants, depressants, and um, they said basically this, this meme has has broken their family. What did you make about this whole? I think the situation got way out of hand. Yeah, I think so. There's so many. There's so many points to discuss over here. I, I think um, first of all, you know, a lot of people were were reacting yesterday to say, you know, we should have bigger priorities, and I think that's a, that's a, a major one. Um, I, I think you know, as of, as so often happens, you know, these kind of stories um, set social media alight. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone. Um, you know, wants to wants to say something about it, uh, and and I think um, this this police woman got caught in the crossfire. I mean, I, I personally have some some issues about the the, the you know whether, whether this video was in poor taste. I I don't really I don't really compare it to those you know videos you see online sometimes of like a break dancing police person or or you know someone singing or whatever. I think like there was something a bit off about about this particular video and the, the raunchy way it was taken or whatever. But it must be said, and I really want to explain this to people who don't fully understand how TikTok works, because a lot of people who saw the video uh, assumed that that video had been put up publicly and that, you know, this person wanted the attention and now she's complaining about the attention. In reality, what seems to have happened is that um, w when you're on TikTok, you can save a draft to your device. You can take a video, you know, save it to your device. You're not even sharing it privately. You're just, you know, keeping it in your, in your phone. And then sometimes people share those drafts to uh, their friends. You know, in this case, you send them to to a group of, of 20 friends, a WhatsApp thread. We all know what these WhatsApp threads are, are like. Um, and all it takes is one of those people to share it to another person, you know, innocently enough, uh, and that other person to share it to another person. And before you know it, um, a video like this gets seen by tens of thousands of people before it's even online, uh, you know, on, on, on Facebook. And then what happened is, you know, someone... Uh, when this whole Floriana mess was happening, people were taking to the streets and celebrating as if we're not living in a pandemic. Um, and people were really upset about the way police were not act taking any action about it. Uh, this this video became a, a symbol of 
police in action, you know, side by side for Rihanna celebrations. You have a woman taking the piss on, on, on TikTok, you know, um, a police woman taking the piss on, on TikTok. And um, and yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, the there were some people who said, you know, this is uh, the, the video itself is, is, is really silly, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, this police woman is, is making a mockery of, of her uniform in a sense. But then the, it really blew up when a lot of people um, when, when the, the police, her family and, and maybe friends in the police force started to call these pages, including Pustitsi uh, posting the, the meme page and telling them to take it down. And that sparked, you know, this kind of reaction of, you know, why are you taking action against us for this for this sort of innocent meme? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, sometimes it happens we, we, when, when people react to something online, their reaction becomes the story. And that's what happened in this case. Um, I think, you know, something like this, uh, is, is obviously hard for, for her to experience. I know the police have said they're taking disciplinary measures. Um, let's hope those are, are, are not disproportionate in, in, in this sense. You know, I know this woman has already suffered a lot um, because, you know, she didn't intend this video to become public and now she's, uh, you know, become a bit of a laughing stock in Malta. And that's something that uh, we, we also need to be very careful of in our, in our reactions. You know, we, we uh, this is something where, you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't really blow it out of proportion. Um, I, I think uh, you know, there's there's also been a, a petition to to you know uh, support Francesca, and people are saying you know we should kind of not be so um, uh, so 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 angry about something like this, you know. But I think it is also a lesson for people uh, in terms of you know being careful what you share, even with WhatsApp threads, because all it takes is someone to share that innocently or not innocently, you know, maybe to pay you back for something else, and before you know it, you know, it's it's online Facebook for everyone to see. Um, Talking about the, the football situation in, in Floriana, yesterday there was also a bit of an update, uh, not by the police saying, you know, whether they're taking any action. Uh, all the police have said so far is that they're analysing footage um, of the celebrations in Floriana to see whether to find anyone or what to find them with. Apparently there's a number of uh, crimes that may have uh, taken place, including being uh, having an unlicensed event, having like alcohol being so sold in, in an unlicensed way, and obviously people being in groups larger than than six. Um, and you know, we, we yesterday we had the Malta Football Association president Bjorn Vassallo saying that the police were actually warned um, before the vote uh, took place, the vote where Flor Floriano was crown champions. Um, and, and so the implication is that they should have kind of prepared themselves uh, a bit a bit better for that situation. Having said that, uh, Bjorn Vassallo said, you know, this is this wasn't a situation where they could have known exactly what would take place. It was a spontaneous celebration, um, and uh, you know, kind of, it's 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 not quite clear who's putting the blame on whom. But um, everyone is then making this 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 case of you know let's let's stay safe let's remember the security and health about our um, about not just our players and our supporters but also public health. What do you think? are you expecting some charges, Sam? I think it's all awfully convenient. You know, you were informed about the decision. We all know what football fans are like. Even me, I, I don't even know the rules about football, and I knew something like this could have happened and they were five minutes away from police headquarters and yet not a single fine has been issued and as we know the PR of the police publish every day how many fines they give to groups of people more than that are you know in groups of more than six you know and yet three days have passed and no disciplinary action and I think it's going to be very telling for you know for the rest of summer and possibly for, for the upcoming weeks. Yeah, there are, there are a couple of points I want to make over here. One is that the police um, are under scrutiny, under a lot of scrutiny at the moment. You know, there's a lot of uh, police reputation and issues. There's the police commissioner uh, appointment taking place at the moment. So, um, you know, they're, they're, they're under a lot of pressure. Also under a lot of pressure are all those restaurant owners and cafe owners and barbers and hairdressers who are taking um, enormous measures and policing their own patrons, you know, in, 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 in such a way uh, that then when you see this happening, it, it's, a, it's a slap in the face for them. Having said all this, I think also uh, the Floriana celebrations took place at a time when the situation regarding COVID in Malta had become 
uh, normalized to the extent that people were starting to get frustrated at the measures and are feeling like these are sort of blown out of proportion. And maybe these sort of Floriana celebrations beca became a bit of a turning point in the in the mentality of people who are saying, you know what, then if this can happen and it's fine, then why aren't we like having a, a party and things like that? You know, so uh, we'll, we'll again see what the what the police reaction is going to be and what the health authorities' reaction is going to be moving forward. And talking about that, I think there's a bit of um, updates in terms of travel, right? We're, we're hating on Latvia right now. Why? <laughs> I mean, connecting these two stories, if, if hundreds of people are allowed to celebrate in the streets, why can't I, you know, hop onto a flight with that same reasoning? And in fact, talking about flights in the airport, Malta has been named as a country to avoid in Latvia's new flight list which came to a shock to everybody considering the, the other countries and where they were placed on this list. So essentially, Malta, together with five other countries, uh, were urged, these were kind of considered countries that you should avoid traveling to. So these countries are Malta, Sweden, the UK, Portugal, Belgium, and Ireland. Essentially, the way from what we can see, the way that they, they kind of made this list was assessing the infection rate um, per country. And essentially, Malta is quite high because we have a small population. So Malta currently right now is 25 per 100,000 inhabitants over the last uh, two weeks. So we made it to Latvia's um, avoid category. Having said that, France and Greece are considered safe. France has had one of the highest death tolls. And Italy and Spain is, is, is placed on the consider carefully. Not that I had any plans to go to Latvia anytime soon, but it's still kind of <laughs> shocking to see that. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, it's going to be interesting to see how all, all, all countries start to open up. You know, in Malta, um, there was a front page story in the Times today about whether, um, uh, about claiming that the airport might be reopened in mid-July. So. Uh, we, we still need to see whether there's there's any truth to that. Um, but yeah, I wonder who's going to be on our no-fly list and whether they'll be equally pissed off at, at us as we are at, at Latvia. Um, in another story, uh, the University of Malta has uh, shot down claims for refunds uh, by students, international students who are staying at the LIA. Residents have paid up front for their accommodation only to uh, end up returning back to their countries because uh, of the of the pandemic uh, and and having to you know uh, essentially still pay for this accommodation many of them are asking for refunds but uh, very few are getting it but some are right sam who are the people who are getting the refunds and, and why is there this this sort of discrimination going on once again students get the short end of the stick so essentially, um, you know, international students, once the pandemic hit Malta, they were, all, all embassies and all countries, you know, were, were asking, asking citizens to return to their home countries and, and Malta had informed them that, you know, the airport is going to close. And I mean, the university was closed anyway. So, so really, there was, there was little point of, of staying in Malta, especially when they didn't know when they would be able to, to return to their home countries. So around 150 students from uh, the university's residents left Malta and um, upon requesting refunds, they were told that um, once you sign the contract, there, there, there is you know, this clause for, for, for no, no refunds. And essentially, um, these are students, you know, the, the, most students don't work. It's, it's, it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money for that, for that residence. Um, they, all pay, they all have to pay, you know, the costs up front. So we're talking, you know, thousands of euros for the rest of the year in which they're not even going to be there. Um, so one of, the, one of the student organizations at the University of Malta has actually compiled um, all these complaints of these students, around 150 of, of you know, some say they have to take out a loan to pay for the accommodation. Some say that now they're paying for two accommodations, even though you know they're not they're not in Malta at the moment. And essentially, from these 150 students, only two have received refunds. One of them was a Spanish national whose father, you know, was a judge, 
in a court in Spain and said, you know, this is completely illegal and we will be pressing charges if you do not provide a refund. Then they provide the refund. The other student was a Canadian national in which the embassies actually stepped in to defend her. And thankfully, she also found someone to, uh, to replace her in the accommodation. Now, essentially, um, what the Spanish national um, argued was that this was a force major. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. An yeah. act of God. So essentially, this was, you know, exceptional circumstances. You know, no one could have predicted this. This was a pandemic, you know, so and therefore the clause, you know, should be overlooked and they should at least, if not get the refund for the month, the upcoming months, at least be able to um, use them as credit for, for, for next scholastic year if they decide to come back. Moral of the story, moral of the story, if you need a refund, get the big guns in, you know, either your father judge or your or your embassy. We'll wait to see whether anyone else gets that um that refund. Moving on to our last story of the day. Um Charming Gauchi gave a press conference yesterday where uh, she she gave us an update on the on the COVID numbers. I'll ask you about those soon, Sam. But she also spoke about um the health authorities considering having mandatory flu shots this winter so uh, the point being that you know there is a vaccine for the flu for the influenza and um, in winter uh, the numbers do go up in a in a big way and and you know given that now malta is living with covid then we need to be quite uh, careful on having these two um viruses basically uh, spreading at the same time and so the, the consideration is that there would be some sections of, of society, especially the vulnerable, uh, who would have to um, have this flu uh, in a mandatory way. Um, currently, it is, it's optional except for, for kids going to, to school, right, Sam? Uh, I think there were a lot of anti-vaxxers who were not very happy about this on our comments, right, Sam? What, what was the reaction to this story? Yes, I had to do a little um, unfriending spree, actually, after I saw our comment section. Um, there are a lot of people in Malta who are against um, mandatory vaccines. There's still this, this whole narrative that, you know, vaccines can potentially cause autism, which is from a discredited scientist. But there's a lot of there's a lot of backlash to this. I mean, it's not even, you know, mandatory yet, but it's just something that's con being considered in order to protect the community more ahead of, you know, the influenza season when a lot of people get sick, you know, the potential to over, overwhelm our healthcare system. So this would potentially be mandatory for, you know, particularly for the vulnerable, so the elderly, those with, you know, those who are immunocompromised, and, this, and other measures are also being considered um, ahead of kids returning to school. Um, so that brings us to the end of today's program. Uh, just want to make a note that at 11, at 11 uh, we'll have COVID calls, an edition all about the Malta Financial Services Authority, uh, the MFSA. Um, we'll be talking about how, how, that, uh, how, how the, the organization is dealing with battling Malta's financial crime um, and you know, even within the, the situation that we're living in, uh, in COVID. Uh, as you know, uh, Love and Malta, Love and Daily is brought to you by Browns and You. And every day we end the program with a little tip from uh, them. Today's tip is to make mental health a priority. So find time to unwind, use practical ways to cope and relax. And that includes taking deep breaths, stretching, meditating. And it might also help to talk about how you're feeling with loved ones and friends. We know that a lot of people... Uh, are feeling lonely in these times and are struggling to deal with, um, you know, maybe working from home or, or having to uh, deal with their kids having uh, schools, uh, schooling from home, you know. So, uh, yeah, be, be sure to, to look after yourself and other people as well. Um, that brings us to the end of today's program. I've been Chris Perejean, joined by Sam Vassallo, and have a day full of loving.